Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening. So tonight I am painting for you these drive-in movie theater speakers. These are the old-timey ones where you had to drive your car in, sit in your car, roll down the windows, and hang these off the side of your car. Hopefully it was a nice warm night, or you would probably get a little chilly as you're watching uh, the movie that you went to the drive-in for. Uh, I'm just jumping right into this painting. Um, before I talk about uh, what I'm doing here, I guess let me say I am using uh, my windmill paper. This is Strathmore paper cut to 9 by 12 and the speaker's drawn on there. I am, oh there we go, there's my reference photo and my uh, paint palette. That might help just a little bit for anybody trying to figure out what I am doing. Uh, so that's my paper, the Strathmore Windmill paper, 140 pound. I am using my Art Secrets quill brushes here for these. I probably will grab my silver black velvet brushes in a little bit when I have to do a bit more detailed work. I'm using my M. Graham paints, of course, as always here in the studio. And uh, I've just mixed up kind of what I think of as a metallic color. I don't know if it's aluminum, I don't know if it's steel, I don't know if it's corrugated, I don't know what it is. But it kind of gives me a metal-ish color, if that's a thing. And in order to make that metal-ish color, um, I am using a bit of turquoise and a bit of Payne's Gray. Uh, now, if you uh, see this picture and you've seen me paint before or you've seen this picture on uh, Instagram or Twitter where it's been posted or, or I believe on my website, watercolorswithmichael.com, uh, you'll see it the other way around. I think later on in this video I realized that my camera settings are a little bit off and everything is backwards on here and I'm gonna flip that around a little bit later on I don't know why I didn't notice it sooner but uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now is in reverse of what I typically would do I'm not left-handed I don't paint with my left hand and uh, my picture should match the reference photo which of course everything is facing the opposite direction but never mind that um, so I'm putting on a basic flat wash on everything the volume knob all of the indentations the, the grill the any detail that's on uh, these speakers I'm just putting a flat wash on and I will come in later and put in a second wash and maybe a third wash if I need it. I don't think on this video that I need that. I had forgotten a quick line there. I just had to draw in very quickly. Um, and now I forgot what I was, <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Oh, I put a flat wash on everything. This flat wash is going to dry light enough that I'll be able to see everything underneath it and everything that I need to put another wash on or more is much darker than this initial wash is anyways. So I'm just going to uh, paint over everything with this initial, initial flat wash and I think it'll work out really nicely. Now this little nub back here, this is part of the hanger of uh, the speaker that is now right now on the left hand side I'm gonna go ahead and try to do a little bit of shadowing on that right now or at least I believe I'm going to there's my turquoise dip into that just a little bit and come on Michael I'm trying to remember how I did this painting I thought I went right into that okay I don't go into that I'll come back to that in a minute I've got all of this block of metal right behind uh, the speakers that uh, the they that the speakers hook into, and that's metal also. It's, it's probably the same exact metal that the speakers are made out of. 
I remember them being not really heavy, but big and bulky and something you didn't really want to have hanging off your window if you could help it, but you couldn't help it too much, so uh, they had to be there. And you could roll the windows up if you wanted to, and they would kind of hang from the glass uh, of your window, or you could leave your windows down and it'd fit over the door sill or the window sill on your door, and you could listen to it without having to listen to anybody else's speakers, which always was kind of interesting. Or you could do what my family always used to do, which was pop yourself up a huge bag of popcorn, uh, get some sodas from the grocery store on your way, throw the lawn chairs in the back of the pickup truck, and... Uh, watch the movie from the back of the pickup truck and just hang those over the sides of the rail as you uh, as you're sitting there and you're watching a giant movie from the comfort of you of your truck in your favorite lawn chair uh, just eating as much popcorn as you could so I have quite fond memories of the drive-in from when I was growing up and where I grew up, the summers were always warm all night long, and so you were probably out there in shorts and a tank top, covered in bug spray, because, well, because there were bugs everywhere and skeeters biting you. Okay, so I'm just going over now. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my reference picture, and almost the entire side of this speaker is... Uh, is pretty dark, so I'm going to go over this with uh, quite a dark mixture here. Uh, in the end, I think I didn't even get this dark enough. I think I needed to either go over this again or be incredibly brave uh, and go over or uh, and make this paint mixture quite a bit darker. It's hard to do uh, knowing. You know, you know that watercolors are going to dry about half the strength, but even so, when you look at it, boy, it's really dark. Am I brave enough to make that even darker yet? And uh, as it turned out on this image, I wasn't quite that brave. So uh, it did lighten quite a bit. I don't think it took away from the painting at all. I think it, what, what turned out was... A really quite a nice painting and uh, I'm rather happy with it okay in this one I'm looking at the speaker and putting on that same color that I did on the first one and again you see I'm not bothering to paint around uh, any feature on here I'm just going over everything and as I say that going around the hole where the volume knob is, that's going to get plenty dark on its own. I don't necessarily need uh, to paint that in dark right now. And I left a hard edge. I'm going to come back and soften that in just a second. But uh, the part that didn't get a second coat of paint is everything that is in the light. Everything that I don't want uh, in shadow. So... I left that light and then I'm taking that edge away. There we go, now you can see it. And you can see uh, now I've got a nice dark side to this along with that nice light side and it actually looks like there's sun shining on part of this and, and a kind of a shadow on the other part. And here I go. The reason I did this in two steps down here at the bottom was I wanted the paint to have just a moment of time to make a hard edge for the top line of the indentation on the bottom, if that made any sense. I wanted a hard line at the top. I can go in and I can add darks and I can make that more shadowy underneath there, but I need to have that hard line or leave a white line and I didn't want to leave a white line. Uh, <laughs> come on, Michael, bring that picture back. What are you doing working across? There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. I didn't want to uh, not have a differentiation in those two pieces on the uh, speaker there. And that will become more evident as we go along with this. You'll see what I'm talking about in uh, 
about 10 minutes, eight minutes, something like that. Okay, let me think about what I need to do. I told you there's not a lot of color in this. A lot of turquoise, a lot of Payne's gray. They are on the top row of, or in this image, the far right-hand side of my paint tray. One at the very top, one at the very bottom. All right, here we are. I'm coming back and I'm painting that little nub and I'm gonna start to put in, instead of bigger, broader details now, now I'm gonna start to put in some finer details and you're gonna see some definition come to life on these speakers. So this little nub is the first thing I need to do and there's a little highlight on the, on the very top of it and the rest of it is got a little bit of shadow around it and I wanna put that on. And then the other hanger back here is almost all in shadow, just a sliver of a line at the top of it, which is in light. And so, again, a nice dark mixture. I probably could have gone a little bit darker yet if I'd have been a little bit more brave or a little bit more bold. Maybe I'd have done that. And of course, that little knob of metal where everything click clips into that's in uh, that's pretty dark in there too so i've got to add that in so again with that same dark mixture just putting that in there and you can see i have switched to a i believe this is a size six silver black velvet brush i've talked about these silver brushes before they really are quite nice brushes and uh, relatively inexpensive you can uh, you know pick them up for uh, you know not nearly as much as you would pay for a a natural hair a Winsor Newton brush or I, I don't know any other a, a brush out there. They're relatively inexpensive. They come to a fantastic point. They hold a lot of paint. Uh, for what you for what you pay for them, they are quite nice. And okay, so I'm just continuing to put a little detail on uh, this block of metal. I don't even know the speaker hanger. Is that what I should be calling these? I don't know. But there's a, there is a little bit of a highlight there, and I need to uh, differentiate clearly what's in highlight and what's in low light. And you can see I've done it there. I hope I've done a good job, and this is really dark back there. So I, I do add a little bit more of the paint's gray uh, to this one. And now you can see there's, it actually looks like there's a bit of definition to that and maybe a bit of uh, 3D, you can definitely see the shadowing on that. All right, as I'm waiting for the paint to dry here just a bit, I can come back in and there's a little notch on the side of this speaker. I suspect that's where uh, they are screwed together right there and so I just drop in some dark colors there. That's the third layer of this same paint right there. And I think that helps to make the top half of this uh, speaker. It really helps put some interest up there. I'm going to put the split where the speakers uh, uh, go together and that will help a bit too. But I think if it didn't have that little black square or dark square anyways, that um, this speaker might really uh, be in trouble a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to put the split where these two halves of the speaker are screwed together. And to do that, I'm using my old liner brush. This is a Grumbacher liner. I believe it's at number one. It's pretty small, but uh, if you look closely at that brush, you can see that there's a lot of paint that's chipped off and worn off on that. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's at number one. And then there's a little line next to it. I'm going to strengthen this 
just a bit until I, you know, not, I don't want to do too much to it, but just until I'm kind of happy with the way it looks. Um, you know, there's, there's just a little bit of a edge. You can see me putting it in and I'm going to take it right back off where the press that made these two halves made a small indentation up there. You can just see uh, a tiny bit of that in the reference photo and I'm just putting a little bit of it on here. There you can see it. Not because I think it's, you know, it's not a super uh, important piece of this. It's a small little bit, but when I'm not doing a lot of details, sometimes it's the small details that really, the small things that really seem to help. Okay, so since I've got this color of paint here, I can go ahead and start to put in some of the ribs on this speaker. There we go. And I'm just dropping them in. I'm using that same uh, liner brush. And I'm not being too careful and I'm not being too cautious. You can see I dipped, it did dip into that little bit of paint in the lower, there we go, let me just move that so you can see it even better, the lower uh, left hand corner of my paint tray there, that's black, that's a Windsor and Newton, ivory black, um, and I've used that before, it's a nice warm black, oh good, you can see some of my hair uh, in the photo too, that or in the movie too, that's always good. Um, but I, I want to differentiate this from the, the rest of the speaker just a little bit. And that black sets it off just, just a little bit. There we go. And, and with that one, I'm pretty much done with that whole speaker on that side. All right, the big speaker uh, looks like it might be just about dry. Or not. Oh, that's right. I got to paint the post. If you look at the post, it's not the same color as the speakers. It's obviously painted uh, metal of some sort. So I'm going to use to paint that uh, a bit of neutral tint. And uh, that's going to set it off. It's going to be just different. Hopefully, I don't get too much on there. If I do, it's going to look weird gray purple. Um, but I need something there because I'm doing such, such a simple back, well, uh, such a simple background. I'm not doing a background on this. So I need to have that post uh, there and in the forefront with the rest of the speakers and wires here. So again, this is just a little bit of neutral tint. There it goes on there. And painting around the wires. I could have painted right over these wires. The wires are going to get painted straight black. So it wouldn't have mattered had I painted over them. Uh, but in this instance, I didn't paint over them. And that's okay. Uh, there's multiple ways to do everything. And since I'm already dabbling in this neutral tint. I'm going to attempt to put in uh, a bit of the shadow that's on here and see if I can't get that started to work for me before I do anything else. You know, why not have the paint do some of the work for me and it's going to spread and smooth on its own and that way I don't have to come back and do some. I really darken that up on the side. I think in the end I overdid the line uh, on the shadow side of this post, but I'm able to go back with um, a, another layer later on in the painting and uh, fix that, uh, correct it a little bit. You'll see what I'm talking about later on when we get to it. But there it is, and uh, with that, now those speakers aren't just floating in space. They're actually attached to something. Your mind says it going all the way down to the ground and holding these up. So that is good for us. Now, if you look at the reference photo, there's kind of a little bit of metal. 
I don't know, perhaps at one point it had a label on it, something maybe for a sponsor uh, to put a sticker there. But I want that to stand out a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm just touching in a little bit of the line around it. I'm not lining it out specifically. I don't actually just go around it in uh, all the way around in 360 degrees, kind of the bottom corners, don't have anything on there. There's more color on the top than there is on the sides. There's definitely more than there is on the bottom. Uh, but I want it to stand out a little bit. It needs to have a little bit of color there so that your brain tells you it's, it's away from the rest of the metal. And I think I did that fairly well there. And oh, it's time, it's time. If I've got the rigger brush in my hand, that must mean that the whole big uh, speaker there, uh, which is right now on the left-hand side, is dry enough to get back into it to do what I need to do. So I had that split on the other speaker. I need to put it in on this one. I'm not going to do anything else with it because I've got more detail. I've got more to do on this speaker as a whole. So I'm going to let that line stand on its own. And here's where I can go back in and paint around the volume knob and add a lot of dark and just push that back in the back. And because I've got Oh, the line at the top of this, I've now defined that space. It looks to me, if you look at it, there's a little tiny fleck of almost white in there. Maybe not quite, but I can really darken this up and it will look as though it's dented into that speaker, or it should look like it's dented into that speaker. I hope it looks like it's dented into that speaker. That's the intent anyways. There we go. Yeah, see, something wasn't quite right. I'm looking at it. Not quite right with the lines. Uh, when I drew it, something wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be. So I'm just wondering if I can fix that or how I can fix that or what I might do to even try to fix that. But it looks to me as though I'm mixing up enough color here that I can start putting in. And there they go. The lines on the ribs and the speaker grill here. And I'm not trying to fill them in all the way they're fairly wide if you look at the reference photo. So uh, I'm just putting in basically the top line of these at the moment. And now I'm extending them around the edge. There we go. And there's a little pit at the end of these. And that's going to help to anchor those at the very end and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with the same color and whatnot and just like I did on the other speaker I'm gonna come back with a little uh, different color and paint the bottoms of these and, and that will hopefully help to uh, thicken those up a little bit make them uh, just a bit wider All right, there we are. Just getting them all, trying to get them all the same length. I don't, I don't mind if the, if they're not the same thickness, all of the lines. I'm okay with that, but I want them all to start in, in a line and I want them all to end in a line so that we have a nice straight line. And here we go, I'm coming back and I'm putting in the lower line now. And again, you'll see that that's a pretty thick uh, line on them, on the reference photo. There's a, a, deep, a deep groove is what I mean to say. 
And a lot of this is going to get filled in with uh, the black oval where the speaker's actually at, or the circle where the speaker's at. And that's okay, I'm just trying to define what that line is right now. There we go. Yes, yes, now I've got to do that circle right there. And the speaker is right behind there and blasts out the best mono sound. Not even in stereo. That uh, money could probably buy in the 1970s, 60s, 70s, 50s. I don't know when drive-ins were in their heyday. But they certainly aren't in their heyday now. All right, I've got to think. Well, I'm going to start with... Looks like I'm starting with the longest one. There you go. There's my black line. And all the way on its neighbor. And there's the shortest one. That's how I want to do that one. And now all I have to do is paint lines that are a little longer and a little shorter, depending on how you look at it, between each until the two sides meet. And that should make my circle. Dab a little bit more black in there. There we go. That's my old timey tube, my <laughs> ancient tube of Windsor and Newton ivory black. There we go. Shortening them, shortening them, shortening them. Long, short. There we are. And it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. Same thing on the other side. A little shorter, a little shorter on each one. A little longer, a little longer. And we've got a circle. Just like that. All right, we don't have too much left to do on this one. We've got a couple of wires and we've got to finish up that post, but we're getting there. Just, I'm going back in with a little bit of my metal color and I'm filling in between the, the two lines. I could have done this earlier, but when I looked at it again, I didn't like the fact that uh, those grooves had two lines in them. So I'm just filling them in a little bit on the shadow side and on the, only on the shadow side. There we go. Okay, Michael, you're fiddling with it now. Move on to something else. Okay, so there, there's that knob. I painted around that volume knob right there. I get a smaller silver black velvet brush. I'm just using black. I know it's not black in a reference photo, but this is going to make it stand out a bit more, especially since it's in shadow. I want it to uh, I want it to really be down there. I can't lighten it at all, but I can darken it. And if I darken it enough, especially right around it or on it, it'll pull that color out. And you can see it right there. Or you can see there's something there that might look reasonably like a volume knob anyways. All right, there's a little rubber grommet or uh, end to this or one of these uh, wires uh, back there. The wire comes out of that. It's in pretty deep shadow. I'm just going to drop it in and then uh, I'm going to drop in the wire later after that has dried but I don't want it uh, I don't want to do them at the same time because I don't want it to seem as though it's one piece even though they're going to be very similar colors when I'm done with it in the end okay what 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 brush do I have here what is this oh I know what this is I wanted to get a brush that is the exact width when I put it down of the wire so I can hopefully paint that wire in one stroke or close to one stroke. And this is an old Windsor Newton University brush. 
It's got very stiff bristles. I've probably had this brush for close to 15 to 18 years and it's been hanging around. I don't know why I leave it hanging around, probably for sentimental reasons or just maybe in case I need to paint a black wire on a a drive-in movie a theater uh, speaker, I guess. It's a perfect brush for that. But again, uh, it's it's got pretty stiff bristles. They, um, <laughs> they, they're they pretty difficult to bend. Uh, but they do sell these brushes in a lot of uh, art stores, and they'll sell them to you in the watercolor section. It's not a bad brush. I've moved on past it to uh, other brushes, obviously. Uh, other brushes I enjoy more. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why I picked this one up to do this particular bit, but uh, there it is. And I'm just finishing up this wire. I've got a little bit uh, that comes out of that rubber area above it. There it is. And I think this color is going to be just ever so different than whatever that black uh, rubber piece is there. I guess it's there to stop the ends of the wires from uh, bending too much and fraying right there. I don't know. There's a bit of highlight on this uh, cable, this wire, so I'm just going to leave it unpainted like that. It's it got a pretty hard edge uh, in the reference photo, and I think I'm going to leave it with a hard edge there. Uh, this is a pretty small area. I'm using a brush that's got hard bristles. It doesn't drop a lot of water, so uh, this cable is pretty much dry already as, as I'm going over it for the second time. There's not, not much water on this at all. And uh, because the bristles are stiff and it's got a round tip, I've got to use something that's a little smaller with a little better point to get into the tight areas. That is where my number two silver black velvet brush comes into play and it's perfect for that. Uh, there we go. Something like that. Come on. You got it, Michael. There it is. All right. And I've got, uh, well, one other thing to finish up on this. I think that's about it. Is that pipe or that post that these speakers are on is not the greatest. I'm doing a little self-evaluation of my work at this point and wondering, do I want to go back in and strengthen uh, some colors in here? And I think the answer that I'm going to give myself is no, at least if I remember how I did this. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going back into my neutral tint and I'm trying to uh, fix what I've done with this post. And because there is such a hard shadow on this, I'm going to be able to paint a darker color right over top of uh, any lines that I've had on this before. It's going to work out for me. Uh, a nice hard shadow on this post and I can get rid of that dark line along the right hand side of my uh, post there. Oh, and I just realized at some point I flipped the uh, video over and it's proper now. I don't, I'm not even sure when that happened. Uh, but that's it. I I think I am all but done with this one, I will say. Uh, I had a great time painting this one. I love painting quirky, kooky things that nobody else would necessarily think to paint. Um, and I have such a good time doing these. I hope you guys like these also. Uh, if you like this, please hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget I'm active on Instagram and Twitter, social media with a lot of stuff that you don't see here on my channel. 
I've got a web page, watercolorswithmichael.com. Uh, I've got some apparel for sale through Teespring. And uh, go to the web page and uh, enjoy it. That's all I've got for you tonight. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.